these visions concerning Judah and Jerusalem came to Isaiah son of Amoz during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, all kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, listen, O earth. This is what the Lord says. The children I raised and cared for have turned against me. Even the animals, the donkeys, and the ox know their owner and appreciate his care, but not my people, Israel. No matter what I do for them, they still do not understand. Oh, what a sinful nation they are. They are loaded down with a burden of guilt. They are evil and corrupt children who have turned away from the Lord. They have despised the Holy One of Israel, cutting themselves off from His help. Why do you continue to invite punishment? Must you rebel forever? Your head is injured and your heart is sick. You are sick from head to foot covered with bruises, welts, and infected wounds without any ointments or bandages. Your country lies in ruins and your cities are burned as you watch foreigners plunder your fields and destroy everything they see. Jerusalem stands abandoned like a watchman's shelter in a vineyard or field after the harvest is over. It is as helpless as a city under siege. If the Lord Almighty had not spared a few of us, we would have been wiped out as completely as Sodom and Gomorrah. Listen to the Lord, you leaders of Israel. Listen to the law of our God. People of Israel, you act just like the rulers and people of Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm sick of your sacrifices, says the Lord. Don't bring me any more burnt offerings. I don't want the fat from your rams or other animals. I don't want to see the blood from your offerings of bulls and rams and goats. Why do you keep parading through my courts with your worthless sacrifices? The incense you bring me is a stench in my nostrils. Your celebrations of the new moon and the Sabbath day and your special days of fasting, even your most pious meetings are all sinful and false. I want nothing more to do with them. I hate all your festivals and sacrifices. I cannot stand the sight of them. From now on, when you lift up your hands in prayer, I will refuse to look. Even though you offer many prayers, I will not listen, for your hands are covered with the blood of your innocent victims. Wash yourselves and be clean. Let me no longer see your evil deeds. Give up your wicked ways. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Help the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Fight for the rights of widows. Come now, let us argue this out, says the Lord. No matter how deep the stain of your sins, I can remove it. I can make you as clean as freshly fallen snow. Even if you are stained as red as crimson, I can make you as white as wool. If you will only obey me and let me help you, then you will have plenty to eat. But if you keep turning away and refusing to listen, you will be destroyed by your enemies. I, the Lord, have spoken. See how Jerusalem, once so faithful, has become a prostitute. Once the home of justice and righteousness, she is now filled with murderers. Once, like pure silver, you have become like worthless slag. Once so pure, you are now like watered down wine. Your leaders are rebels and companions of thieves. All of them take bribes and refuse to defend the orphans and the widows. Therefore, the Lord, the Lord Almighty, the mighty one of Israel says, I will pour out my fury on you, my enemies. I will turn against you. I will melt you down and skim off your slag. I will remove all your impurities. Afterward, I will give you good judges and wise counselors like the ones you used to have. Then Jerusalem will again be called the home of justice and the faithful city. Because the Lord is just and righteous, the repentant people of Jerusalem will be redeemed. 
but all sinners will be completely destroyed for they refuse to come to the Lord. Shame will cover you when you think of the times you offered sacrifices to idols in your groves of sacred oaks. You will blush when you think of all the sins you committed in your sacred gardens. You will wither away like an oak or garden without water. The strongest among you will disappear like burning straw. Your evil deeds are the spark that will set the straw on fire and no one will be able to put it out. This is another vision that Isaiah, son of Amaz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem will become the most important place on earth. People from all over the world will go there to worship. Many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Israel. There he will teach us his ways so that we may obey him. For in those days, the Lord's teaching and his word will go out from Jerusalem. The Lord will settle international disputes. All the nations will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. All war will stop and military training will come to an end. Come, people of Israel, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The Lord has rejected the people of Israel because they have made alliances with foreigners from the east who practice magic and divination, just like the Philistines. Israel has vast treasures of silver and gold and many horses and chariots. The land is filled with idols. The people bow down and worship these things they have made. So now everyone will be humbled and brought low. The Lord cannot simply ignore their sins. Crawl into caves in the rocks. Hide from the terror of the Lord and the glory of his majesty. The day is coming when your pride will be brought low and the Lord alone will be exalted. In that day, the Lord Almighty will punish the proud, bringing them down to the dust. He will cut down the tall cedars of Lebanon and the mighty oaks of Bashan. He will level the high mountains and hills. He will break down every high tower and wall. He will destroy the great trading ships and all the small boats in the harbor. The arrogance of all people will be brought low. Their pride will lie in the dust. The Lord alone will be exalted. Idols will be utterly abolished and destroyed. When the Lord rises to shake the earth, his enemies will crawl with fear into holes in the ground. They will hide in caves in the rocks from the terror of the Lord and the glory of his majesty. They will abandon their gold and silver idols to the moles and bats. They will crawl into caverns and hide among the jagged rocks at the tops of cliffs. In this way, they will try to escape the terror of the Lord and the glory of his majesty as he rises to shake the earth. Stop putting your trust in mere humans. They are as frail as breath. How can they be of help to anyone? The Lord the Lord Almighty will cut off the supplies of food and water from Jerusalem and Judah. He will destroy all the nation's leaders, the heroes, soldiers, judges, prophets, diviners, elders, army officers, honorable citizens, advisors, skilled magicians, and expert enchanters. Then he will appoint children to rule over them and archery will prevail. People will take advantage of each other, man against man, neighbor fighting neighbor. Young people will revolt against authority and nobodies will sneer at honorable people. In those days, a man will say to his brother, since you have a cloak, you be our leader. Take charge of this heap of ruins. No, he will reply, I can't help. I don't have any extra food or clothes.
Don't ask me to get involved. Judah and Jerusalem will lie in ruins because they speak out against the Lord and refuse to obey him. They have offended his glorious presence among them. The very look of their faces gives them away and displays their guilt. They sin openly like the people of Saddam. They are not one bit ashamed. How terrible it will be for them. They have brought about their own destruction. But all will be well for those who are godly, tell them. You will receive a one but all will be well for those who are godly, tell them. You will receive a wonderful reward. But say to the wicked, your destruction is sure. You too will get what you deserve. Your well earned punishment is on the way. Children oppose my people and women rule over them. Oh, my people, can't you see what fools your rulers are? They are leading you down a pretty garden path to destruction. The Lord takes his place in court. He is the great prosecuting attorney presenting his case against his people. The leader and the princes will be the first to feel the Lord's judgment. You have ruined Israel, which is my vineyard. You have taken advantage of the poor, filling your barns with grain extorted from helpless people. How dare you grind my people into the dust like that, demands the Lord, the Lord Almighty. Next, the Lord will judge the women of Jerusalem who walk around with their noses in the air with tinkling ornaments on their ankles, their eyes roving among the crowds, flirting with the men. The Lord will send a plague of scabs to ornament their heads. Yes, the Lord will make them bald for all to see. The Lord will strip away their artful beauty, their ornaments, headbands, and crescent necklaces, their earrings, bracelets, and veils of shimmering gauze. Gone will be their scarfs, ankle chains, sashes, perfumes, and charms, their rings, jewelers, party clothes, gowns, capes, and purses, their mirrors, linen garments, head ornaments, and shawls. Instead of smelling of sweet perfume, they will stink. They will wear robes of sashes, and their well-set hair will fall out. They will wear rough sackcloth instead of rich robes. Their beauty will be gone. Only shame will be left on them. The men of the city will die in battle. The gates of Jerusalem will weep and mourn. The city will be like a ravaged woman hurled on the ground. In that day, few men will be left alive. Seven women will fight over each of them and say, let us all marry you. We will provide our own food and clothing. Only let us be called by your name so we won't be mocked as old maids. But in the future, Israel, the branch of the Lord, will be lush and beautiful and the fruit of the land will be the pride of its people. All those whose names are written down who have survived the destruction of Jerusalem will be a holy people. The Lord will wash the moral filth from the women of Jerusalem. He will cleanse Jerusalem of its blood stains by a spirit of judgment that burns like fire. Then the Lord will provide shade for Jerusalem and all who assemble there. There will be a canopy of smoke and cloud throughout the day and clouds of fire at night covering the glorious land. It will be a shelter for daytime heat and a hiding place from the storms and rain. <gasps>